Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I want to look at something called Silicon Zeros. Now, Silicon Zeros is pretty much what Shenzhen IO is if you took out all the assembly language parts of it. So what you're doing is you're building pieces of hardware and you're making them work. So uh, at the easiest levels, you're doing very simple stuff like uh, you're rewriting chunks of memory. You see, ask you, without configuring modules, get memory slot 1 all the way up to 8. So here's a simple example of a circuit. You take the value 1 and it goes into the memory slot. Then we read the memory slot out, right? So this is basically the address for a memory slot one, and this is the output for memory one. And you add the value in that, and you store it in location one. So you have a, right, a reader, an adder, and a writer, and of course, when you test it, it just runs through everything. Beep, 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 beep. And problem solved. And you get a nice little bit of the story talking about how they're trying to, you know, make a tiny, tiny computer, a miniature computer, as they say. There's the cows, where the question is, can you set each slot in memory to the number of cows alive? Where, when I was, when a cow was four, it began having its own calves once a year, and those cows did the same once they were four. Which is very strange, because that means that the cows are only having female cows, right? Because that wouldn't make any sense if the males were having kids, right? Uh, or calves. But yeah, uh, you see, this is how this works. What we've got is we start with... The, wow, I don't remember how this works. These problems are... They're, they're not quite in the same way that Shenzhen IO is. With Shenzhen IO, you generally start with a problem and you come up with, you come up with a solution and then you optimize it and make it smaller. But I think with this game, I've felt that the first solution I've come up with has almost always been the best solution. But you spend so much time trying to figure out what that initial solution is, right? you got to get that secret figured out. This is the multiplier. Multiplier is kind of complicated. <laughs> What you're supposed to do is take the value 7 and multiply it by 2 and write the value 14 in here, right? So, what do we have? We have uh, a little counter here, right? This is our loop. We start and we're going to increment it by 3. We're only going to implement it by 3 if uh, we have finished our loop here. We have these uh, input selectors which work based on comparators. I it's so hard to explain what I did, but it does actually work here. You see, we write the numbers, numbers come out, numbers come out, and bingo, you win the game. Now, it's worth noting, oh, sorry, it's worth noting here, if you go to any one of these, that they do actually provide many different iterations, so you can't just make presumptions about how the game is supposed to work. Uh, now you start out just learning the game early on. Here's a, a device that goes through memory starting at slot 0 and sets each slot to its original value, plus 1. Wow. So you have a... This is here is a, an, increment, uh, an incrementing system here, right? What I've got... What I've got is a counter, right? So we start with a, a latch here which stores the value 0 outputs the value of 0 into my adder. We also take add the value 1, and then we write that back in. So in every cycle, this thing is going to increment by 1. So then we take the current memory address, we read out the value, we add 1 to it, and then we write it back to that memory address. So again, very simple to make to see how this works, right? And again, you get more stories about 0com. This is Laszlo, he's uh, from Hungary and he has all sorts of puzzles about cows. Uh, the puzzle select screen, as you notice, is all like a blackboard. Um, as time goes on, technology improves, things get more miniaturized, and then you get some really hard challenges towards the end here. <laughs> so, this is as far as you need to go to complete the game. In the first one, yeah, you have various basic things. The second one is actually building a working computer here. So this computer here is using the counter, which is this section down here. 
it then reads in an instruction from memory, an instruction decoder converts the instruction code, opcode, and gives you the numbers, and then you have a couple of different selectors. So the selectors, what they do is they say, if your uh, if the input instruction is set R, then it will take the value from this input line and send it on the output. So this is using set R to set the value inside one of these registers. However, if the value is save, sorry, if we've got the if the instruction is save, then it will use this cycle. Similarly, if we're uh, doing add, there's an add instruction down here. This is like pretty complicated. So I can use a single uh, instruction multiplexer here because both the instructions, both the add and the set, are writing to this register system. The difference between them is one is reading the value of another register and then adding to it, whereas the other one is just taking the value and directly setting it. So when you test it, here we go. Bingo, 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 bingo. It all works, of course. This is the culmination of Lazo's dreams. He really forever wanted to make a computer that everybody can use. The next step after that is you have to deal with time. And time suddenly makes things a lot more complicated. Okay, so what we've got here is good work getting the quadrupler done. What we have to do is make a module output four. Now, normally you could edit this to just make it output four, but obviously they want you to do something with it. And what we have is memory here. And you can read the memory with these state modules, right? So we gotta figure out some way of getting a four out of it. Now, the other thing we have is the adder. So the way I can see to get four is to add three to one. So we need the contents of address 10 and the contents of address 11. Uh, now, how do we get 10? Well, one way to do it is to start with uh, by referencing five, right? We could do like a cascade. So let's just do this to show you how it works. Stick that there. We're gonna just basically cascade this memory across. And as it happens, it'll take a few seconds for, uh, for the memory, or a few milliticks of the memory to do this. But at the far end, so this will be referencing 10, and the location in 10 will be three, so we can take the output from three, right? And then this three will point to address 11 here, and address 11 here will point to the value one, which we can add here, and then that should actually solve the problem, right? So let's test this. Bing, 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 bing. You see that? So you see how the question marks illustrate that the uh, data is not yet stable, but bang, before we even get stable, it will just, it just stops running because we're out of time, we're too slow. So we need to think of faster ways to get everything. Well, let's go back. Well, the first way to fix this is we, we don't need to go to memory to get the value 10, right? We can just take that out of here, right? Oh, sorry. Sorry, we can't do that. We have to right click and bin it. So with using the adder, we can add the value five to the value five and get 10, right? So that's us doing three cycles instead. So let's test that, right? So a little faster, but you can see my instruction time is getting used up and we're just out of time before that happened. We've got the value three, we've got the value one, but we haven't quite got it. Okay, so we need another way. We are converting the value three to the value 11 in uh, 12 clock cycles. We need a faster way to do it. You know what a faster way to do it is? Let's delete this. We have the value three, we have the value five. So if you add three to itself, you get six. You add six to five, you get 11. And then we can feed that in there. So we need a pair of adders, right? First, we're gonna add the value of three to itself. And then we're gonna add the value of the result, which is six, to the value five. And then finally, we can use that to address the memory slot. And this is totally impractical, but it should actually solve the puzzle. So again, faster, faster, 
six, six, eleven, and... Come on, stabilize. We have the value of four. The results are in. Getting to and from memory is slow. It ain't getting any faster. She uses a lot of, like, apostrophes at the end of her words. We're trying all kinds of tricks to speed it up. Caches, look ahead, it's the works. 12 milliticks is as fast as we can get. Wish I had more time in lap. Feel like I could sort things out if I just had more time. With Laszlo so down. What? Though I'm spending all my time picking up the slack. Almost feels like I run the place now. Not rightly sure how I feel about it. I think she's obviously um, speaking, you know, um, stereotype. That's what she is. We also have products. This is the... F oh, yeah. And so, yeah, actually, on the... If you remember the CPU that I showed you earlier, the way to make it work with timings is to add this. <laughs> you, you don't need it, but uh, it actually s slows things down, right? So if I, uh, if I just grab this, and then you can store your partially built ones here, right? Let's just nuke this. And then add... So that's the one that I had from the previous puzzle, right? If we test this, it tells you it takes 39 cycles because that's how long it counts the number of ticks that it takes for everything to propagate through the system, right? So I can propagate through the system, and the problem is I run out of time. So the way you fix this, right, is if you go back to edit, I'm going to delete this and bring back the previous model. What I've done, the only difference is here, is this is a register. And so the opcode, the source, target, and destination are loaded into this, and then that drives the rest of the logic. So while this is off doing the memory modifications, working on the registers, this part of the cycle is back to getting the new instruction and decoding it. So we're saving, it's, it's like pipelining basically what we're doing here, is you're making sure that one part of the system is able to do its work while the other part is doing its own stuff. And we can get away with this because the way the challenges are all laid out, is none of these instructions modify each other. So these are essentially read only, and this is the only write region. So we are quite hap quite possible, quite entirely happy doing, doing this this way. Uh, and of course, if you've played the game or if you haven't played the game, then uh, yeah, I just gave away how to do it. And yeah, finally, you do get some really awful, difficult, hard ones. Actually, you get some really easy ones. <laughs> and then you get some really awful ones, like such as compute have a machine which computes which character or which number is greater than another which sounds really easy but you only have equals you don't have subtract you, you don't have anything you really are stuck in a bad way and i tried to sit through this i think i spent half an hour on twitch tonight didn't get anywhere Hello Sam, did you know it's been a year since you replaced Dana as our chip designer? Because Dana is a, a name which could be used for a boy or a girl, you'll notice, yeah. Uh, but that's the character who you're supposed to play, I believe. Well, someone's going to figure out how to copy our high-speed processor, so we need to design even faster ones before they do. I have a new idea for a parallel approach. So, parallel approach is execute these instructions. The executes are all send uh, zero out the memory. So pretty easy. Let's just start with this. We're going to take that and then decode the instruction, right? And the instruction basically says set whatever's in this memory location to zero. So it's pretty easy to grab, not the latch, sorry. We're going to ditch that. We're going to grab the, the writer. The memory location will be this location. And then we need to set the value zero, right? Because of course this computer is, they've decided to optimize it. It's not dealing with ones and zeros, it's now just dealing with zeros. So this thing does what we're requiring, right? It sets stuff to zero. The only problem is it's not fast enough. So we need to be able to execute two instructions simultaneously. How do we do that? Well, we need to have two memory addresses, right? So I'm going to change this so that we increment that as value 2. Uh, and then I'm 
going to add an extra adder in here. Let's do that. Put that up to the memory slot. So we take the output from this and then we add one to it. And then we just replicate this whole section here. Oh. Attach. And that should be us, right? These things should run in parallel. Let's do this. It's really kind of beautiful to watch the bits rippling across the system like this. You see that? And the numbers are there. The numbers are fast. And I've... Oh, wow. I'm going to get a 2.5% raise for getting twice the performance. You've been working here for a while. We wanted to give you some recognition for what you've done. That's fabulous. Let's, and you'll notice, uh, oh, my goal is 11, so I didn't quite get the score that I want. Let's take a look and see. I guess my uh, tick counter is pretty good. Although, uh, module scores could do a little improvement there. Oh, I wonder how I get rid of another instruct. Oh, you know what? Yeah, there, duh. There, I can just duplicate this thing. There, now we've done it. Run the simulation again. Beep, 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 beep. And that's it. Wait, it says current 12, best. Wait, what? Wait, I'm confused. I got rid of a thing and it told me my best was... I'm, I'm really confused now. Look, look, look. The game, as you may have heard, is Silicon Zeros. It is a game where you are solving puzzles. The puzzles are... They're not quite as fun or as devious as Shenzhen IO. I think I'm going to still say Shenzhen IO is definitely a better game in many ways. But this, if you hated the assembly language coding sections, which were very important to Shenzhen IO, then this is much more about hardware. Having said that, I didn't have quite the same experience of try of getting a solution and then optimizing the solution down. So it doesn't seem to have that level of a replay that, that Shenzhen IO does. And it, I'm, it doesn't, you know, there's probably room for some other problems to be in the game. Uh, you know, I, I love these games. I love these games and uh, this one is making me hate it, but I love being able to hate games because they're too hard. So yeah, check it out. It's Silicon Zeros. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>